So what's the plan today, Larry? Step by step, what do you want to do? Right, priority today is starting off with lock press. Yep. I have a big lock April 6th, a lock championship. So that's the goal for right now. And then after lock, we're doing incline bench and then some steps you work after that. But Okay, do you warm up? Why? On anything else before the log, or you just go straight to the log? Oh, 100% warm up. About 15 yeah, yeah. minutes, some mobility work. You'll see me do it on the mat over there. Like dumbbells and stuff, just get everything moving. Just just bodyweight stuff. Just okay. touch my pure form is, calves, hamstrings, glass, all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yourself? Uh, well, I, me personally, I would. Because um, log press isn't usually first event in shows most of the time. So, what I would do traditionally would be to kill the shoulders off completely. So I do dumbbells up to 60 kilos for as many reps as you can, usually 40, 50 reps. Okay. And that just gets a massive pump in them, tires them out, and then you're going into the log press as you would in a contest. So like second, third, fourth event, you're already a bit fatigued. Um, I just find that safest as well, because everything's full of blood. Because a log press is one of these events where if you're not fully warmed up, it's so easy to rip your, your long head on your bicep and you're laboring as well, which I have done. Oh, twice. Okay. So uh, I'm very cautious at the minute. This shoulder's still fucked. I haven't heard of that until now, so thanks for the fair yeah, warning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like no. my long head bicep. Yes. <laughs> oh, mate, it's the one of the worst ones, log press, uh, right. on the bicep, I find, anyway, really bad. I'd be like, have you got some injuries already on the long head? No, I haven't. But it's just tight. Hopefully I never do. Just tight and stiff. But I'll I it must up. say, mate, some of your videos you put online are fucking ridiculous. I've been lucky not getting hurt, but thank you, man. Very lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very lucky. Worth of wood. I mean, you're squatting and deadlifting crazy amount of weights. No, no real support, no socks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. You don't wear knee, knee supports, knee like braces or anything, but, you know, the... Sleeves? I do wear sleeves, yeah. You do? Sleeves, I just got a pair of elbow sleeves, start wearing for the log and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm starting wearing more support and then soon I'm getting the neoprene um, underbelt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just started using that for the first time a couple weeks ago. And you don't use a proper belt like this? Uh, no. Wait, do you? Just, it's just like a shitty neoprene one, but it's not. Do you use a, a thick lever belt or something like that over no. this? No, no, no. Just this? Just this. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. I mean, when I was competing, uh, I. Uh, I'll put it this way, from World's Strongest Man 2016, I hung my belt up and I didn't touch it until two weeks before World's Strongest Man 2017. So you okay. train the whole year, squats, deadlifts, everything, even yoke, train it without a belt and your core just goes fucking huge. And then you're able to, what I found is I got a massive advantage over the other guys, like log pressing and axle and stuff like that and squats and deadlifts is my core is just so much more powerful than everybody else's so if i got 220 kilos to my chest i wasn't wobbling about with it i could just get it to my chest and press it whereas everyone else would get to the chest and then wobble about and i think it's because i didn't wear a belt all year i was just so much more statically in place than everybody else oh that makes sense yeah You got your own subs and stuff now, Larry? Yes, sir. BCA's yeah. pre workout. Good. Cool. Oh, man. yeah. So far, so good, man. No complaints. Good. Yeah. yeah you've got to capitalize on everything else you can. Yeah. It's one thing I, I, I missed out on, really. Um, I was your sort of age, not building my profile enough. I didn't start Instagram until I think the back end of 2015. I didn't really have an Instagram account. Okay. Uh, never bothered with YouTube. So I've missed out on a hell of a lot, but. Uh, uh, you're doing the right thing for sure. Remember, from the looks of it, you're, gonna, you're making a lot of money on your subs, your clothing, your YouTube. And that will, that's what you need to propel you to get to the world's strongest man because as you know, it's in a fucking expensive sport. It seriously is. Traveling, food, yeah. everything. I worked it out once, I, I reckon, all in, I reckon it costs about 70 to 80 grand a year to be a pro strongman. Okay. Yeah, to be top level. Like, you know, like food, sups, all that kind of stuff. Travel, you know, taking physios with you, physiotherapy, recovery methods, it all adds up. I was spending 800 quid a week when I was, uh, before I won the Worlds, like 2015, I was doing 800 pounds a week, it's about $1,000 a week. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, just on my body, not on travel or anything else. That was just on like food supplementations and physio and recovery, like, you know, hyperbaric chambers and whatever else. That sounds fucking, about right. It's fucking expensive. Seriously, but when you make it to the top, it's well worth it. It is, yeah. You definitely get the, re the return. It's an investment. That's right. It's an investment, yeah. So you that something like you, you're ready for a workout or whatever you, whatever you would say without it sounding too like fucking cheesy? Okay. Right, you ready to smash Matt's mum? Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah let's do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> right, you ready to smash things up? Let's do it, come let's on. Do it, man. Oh, it's a conveniently placed log for us, that's nice. <laughs> Turns everything's in place. Lovely. You know the weight of the log? I don't. There's a number in here, but it doesn't feel like whatever that number is, so. I'm uh, just stretch over here for about 10 minutes. Yeah, I'll get the content to it. High rep, high volume rep work. And that is just basically just to get some blood into the triceps, into the shoulders, and it just helps protect everything really. You don't want to jump straight into Locker's log. It's such a niche little movement, and it's hard to get high reps in, so you can't really get enough blood in the shoulders, in my opinion. So it's always good just to get a little bit of a workout in. All right, beforehand. Let's do it. strong man stuff before you did the two months before? Not at all. Nothing. I did a yoke four years ago. Once. Yes. <laughs> and I haven't touched any strong man training since. That's, that's, that's pretty impressive. Well I um started strong man when I was 19 doing the odd competition and uh, uh believe this or not I trained out of a normal commercial gym up until I was 24. One England strongest man at 22 one UK Strongest Man at 23, and then made my first World Strongest Man appearance at 24. Four years, five years after. Five years after I started. Sorry. And uh, I did zero strongman training up until I was 24. And then I thought, you know what? I nearly made the final. And I thought, you know what? For somebody that doesn't even train strongman, maybe I should get some kit and start training. 100%. <laughs> so I did, and then 25, First reserve for the final, 26, fourth, uh, 27, no, 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 tw 26 came sixth, 27 came fourth, 28, I came third, and then when I was 29, I won the fucker. All right. So it's just that very slow, gradual every year, just getting that little bit better. Um, and the, obviously the body weight I was putting on Jeez, six kilo a year. So what's that pounds? Like 15, 16 pounds, 20 pounds a year, getting up towards. Okay. So it's like a, a nice steady progress. Seriously. It yeah. looped, it looped a lot faster than it did. Cause when you get, when you get up to 400 pounds, everyone's like, everyone's just like fucking out. You put 20 pounds on, it's all around, you know, your neck and face and shoulders. Seriously. Doesn't really go on your legs, so. Well, it looks like someone to your calves. So then it's still yeah. there. <laughs> the calves are still there, yeah. <laughs> So for me, the best way to train calves is to not train them. Well, it's been working great for me, as you can see. <laughs> it's been working fantastic. Um, honestly, I, I've just found that, you know, when you start doing your yokes and your farmer's walks, you know, with 200 plus kilo in either hand, it, that just trains your calves naturally. Tr doing squats, freestyle, you know, unassisted squats, leg press. I just found that my, my car, I've never trained my calves. I've got some, like the biggest calves in the business. <laughs> um, I mean, it does help, you know, when you're walking around at 440 pounds in body weight. Serious. You're getting a constant calf workout anyway, aren't you? But, uh, That's true. Yeah. Jesus. So Larry, as I said, man, you've, you've created a, a massive shit storm <laughs> <laughs> on the internet. I could say I'm stirring the pot good, yeah. Yeah, you know, you, you, your presence already in the strongman world is phenomenal. You know, you've definitely caught the, the attention of all the fans and all the strongmen. 
So I guess you're just getting into strongman. Uh, what are your what are your aspirations? What do you want to do? Well, <clears throat> I'd love a podium finish at World's Strongest Man. I can't say right now that first place in World's Strongest Man is a realistic goal. While I am ambitious, I still like to. I feel like a realist, and mm -hmm. I think finishing top three is possible for me. And I really just started Strongman a couple months ago, so I can't say how far I can take it, but it seems like a top three finish at World Strongest Man is possible. I have log lift April 6 and Wembley. I'm actually an ice and strongest man yeah. in June, so it's getting a lot of experience this year. And I want to say in the next three, four years, I can be a serious strongman competitor, but yep. it's important to keep in mind, I'm still do, doing bodybuilding at the end of the year. Yeah. And I'm still going for another powerlifting record next year. Powerlifting, right? Okay. Um, I just have to understand events in powerlifting. Yeah. I want to get um, something called like the fear weight record in sleeves. It's been a goal of mine for years. Anyways, strongman's a priority right now. Um, and I'll be training the majority of the year, this year, next year, the year after. Yeah. For strongman and it's been a real privilege to have Thor now yourself yeah yeah um have gotten me along uh -huh. so it's fair to say I have an advantage <laughs> oh, damn right yeah 100%. and then for sure and then my following my social media um because of my fans and supporters I'm able to travel and yeah um live the lifestyle I do because I wouldn't have been able to spend two months in Iceland had it not been yeah my supporters all so time yeah I was going to ask you uh when you're 24 how did you earn a living to be able to support this expensive lifestyle? So, geez, man, I, I had a hell of a, uh, a nor what, what, I, what I consider to be a normal career. I uh, started full-time employment when I was 16 as a truck mechanic. Okay. And 17 started working doors, like security, you know, nightclubs and pubs and stuff like that. And did that up until I was 26. I was working 55 hours a day in my day job, Monday to Saturday sometimes 60 hours uh, in the week. Okay. You can say that one more time, 55 hours a week, because you said 55 hours a day, which even for you, yeah. seems unlikely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right in the day. Come on, bro. <laughs> oh. Come on now. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> Don't have to be patronizing about it, just say. <laughs> I know you're gonna get me back. No, I'm though. fucking totally getting you back. I know you are. I'm waiting for it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wait till you have to wait till we're walking down the street. <laughs> 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 Go ahead. <laughs> the enthusiasm for the cameraman's just gone through the roof. He loves being, he loves being touching the balls, doesn't he, man? Cameraman, the filmmaker. Fuck filmmaker. you. Get on with the job. Fuck <laughs> you. Get your bike, right? You fuck you. Yeah, you cover didn't... myself up. You're damn straight. <laughs> oh, fuck. It does actually... Sometimes, sometimes even, sometimes a flick is worse than a kick. Yeah, if you get way right worse. on that sweet spot. Yeah, it's... way worse. <sighs> You're welcome. Thanks, friend. No problem. All no right, problem. let's carry on making you look good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I was working 55 to 60 hours a week in my day job. So Monday to Saturday, sort of doing 10 hours a day. Uh, working the doors, security, nightclubs, pubs, four, five nights a week. So, you know, I, I, I'd work seven till five. I'd train, I'd go straight to the gym. I'd train till sort of half five till nine o'clock, something like that. And then I'd go home, quick shower, bite to eat, and then I'd be back out working the doors, like 11 till three in the morning. And that was most nights. You know, we're talking four or five nights a week, I'd do that, plus my day job. Easily working 100 hours a week. Uh, I had a wife and kids, mortgage, bills, you know. Uh, I was killing myself. And then the opportunity came along. I met my manager, who was, my manager's a, a local millionaire. Okay. Uh, worth about 100, well, he's worth over 100 million. And, and I joined his gym, he's got like a health spa. And I joined his gym and he sort of said, you know, what are you doing in my gym? Are you gonna, you're gonna break the place. So I explained to him what my passion was and what my goal was. And he, at, this is the age of at 20, 20, 27, I did this. And he said to me, he just looked me in the eyes and he said, do you think you can win the world's strongest man within five years? And I said, I'll do it in three. And he shook my hand there and then. And he supported me. He said, quit your job. I'm going to pay your bills and uh, I'll back you to be the world's strongest man. So that was my little fairy tale. 
Holy story. Shit. Get out of here. Because sponsorship, you know, I wasn't sort of, I wouldn't say clever enough, but it, did, it didn't really have the platform back then to use Facebook and Instagram and, and YouTube as much to be, to, you know, to make money from as it is nowadays. And I suppose it was that fairy tale of just having the support from a millionaire just to take me to be the world's strongest man. And from that day forward, you know, I quit my job, sold the door business. And uh, it went from doing 100 hours a week in work to actually doing 100 hours a week plus in Strongman. And that's when I, I came into a league of my own. That's when I really, you know, everything, my, my weights went up, my body weight went up, my attitude adjusted. And uh, yeah, I, I just became obsessed, like obsessed. Every, every waking moment was Strongman. Every single, you know, wake up, drink, protein back to bed, get up at nine, another breakfast, go back to bed, I'll get up at 11, more food, physio, dinner, back to bed, get up at three, eat again, go training, go to a pool, do hot cold treatment, do stretching for an hour, I'd have another meal at home, do an hour and a half hyperbaric treatment, more food, back to bed, and that was my life every single day, Monday to Sunday, seven days a week. I didn't have a day off, I didn't have birthdays, Christmases, christenings, there were no days out with the mates. There were no pubs. There were no, there was nothing. There were no meals out. There was nothing in that. It was just complete obsession for the last three years of my career to be the world's strongest man. And it fucking paid off. And I don't think, there's no denying in 2017, I came in and there's no denying it. I was the strongest man on the planet that day. I fucking outlifted everybody by a mile. Squatting, deadlifting, pressing. And, you know, I didn't, didn't quite win the moving events, but I trained that hard that, you know, I came third on the plane pull and I came fifth on the tire flip, which was good for me. Um, it just, just trying to say, man, you've just got to be fucking obsessed. Absolutely obsessed. You can't do these days go to expos. I'm sure Four will tell you this, you know, that last year he did from 17 to 18, I could tell he was obsessed because he wasn't doing any work. And that's, that's something I turned down from 16 to 17. I turned down hundreds of thousands of pounds of appearances and endorsements because I just, you know, TV shows, like, no, I just want to be the world's strongest man. I need to get that done first. And I can tell that's what Thor did from 17 to 18, as I didn't, I didn't see him do anything. He might have done the very odd appearance, but I reckon out of the 365 days in the year, I was committed to 364 of them to strong man. And that's the God's honest truth. And that's what you've got to do. And I know, and I know that's what Thor did to be the best. Uh, and you can tell it's paid off, and you've been experienced that before, you know, two months, and he, I can imagine he is fucking obsessed. Absolutely. And you've got to be. You've got to be to be the best. You embody me that hard work pays off, seriously. Yes, 100%. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Nothing's handed to you, nothing at all. You want to get good at something, you, there's no magic pill. You've got to pick up the fucking weights and do the reps. <clears throat> Sure. My name is Larry Wills. I'm 24 years old, 282 pounds right now. Uh, my achievements are as follows. I've broken the all-time world record in powerlifting at 242 pounds in knee sleeves with a 21-71 total. And then a couple years after that, I broke the 275 all-time world record held by Stan Efforting. Uh, I finished with 22-75. Um, my best total today is 22-92. Um, that was done a couple years ago. And that was just an easy. I haven't trained in knee wraps, I never um, competed in knee wraps. I've been up training in sleeves with as little support as possible. Um, over the last year, I've gained over 800,000 followers. This time last year, I was at 250,000, and it just has been skyrocketing ever since. I'm at over a million now, with about 40,000 followers um, per week. I've gotten good at networking and using social media to my advantage, and. It's been because of my supporters and all my followers on social media that I can live the lifestyle I live now, traveling the world and meeting people that I look up to and I can learn from. It's just been I'm having the time in my life, doing what I love to do. And I couldn't be more grateful to be where I'm at today. What would you say is um, uh, 
How would you describe your place in the kind of strength sports firmament right now? Uh, it seems like you're, and the controversial is the wrong word, but like, a, a, like a, a really, you know the phrase enfant terrible? Like the terrible child, it means like this young fucking oh, start that everyone's kind of super excited is here. Uh, why, why, okay, maybe this, why is everybody so excited about your presence? Why, what do you think it is that's so appealing about you? Okay. Obviously you're a world record powerlifter, but like, you know, you're making waves in strength sports and bodybuilding and, and all these. Uh, so yeah, what, what do you think it is? Sure. What I think makes me so popular right now and why I've amassed a uh, big following so quickly, I think it's because not am I just strong, but I have a lean bodybuilder's physique. And I think that attracts the masses. The masses want abs, they want to be ripped. They want to look good, not just be strong. And while strongman and powerlifting is there, it's a big community, the community that wants abs and to look good is even bigger. So I think I've done really good with balancing both. Um, and as I see it, pound for pound, um, I'm right up there you know, with the best in the world while maintaining a very desirable physique. And if I look outside the box looking in, I could see why um, people would gravitate towards me versus let's say other strongman competitors. There's definitely strongman competitors who are much more experienced and stronger at many events, many more events than me. But I think it's my image, my physique and uh, my personality that attracts people to me, for sure. And just finally, well, two more things. <clears throat> Could you maybe just, actually one more thing. Can you just tell me who your hero is and who your mentors and inspirations are? I don't have just one. Um, it kind of changes <laughs> by the season um, because, but I've had like, when I first started out, um, I would be hooked on YouTube and um, I didn't have money to afford a coach or um, any sort of like real training program. So I would just look to YouTube for all my training tips and advice. I look at guys like Chris Hickson, um, Dan Green, Eric Lillybridge, and those are my powerlifting idols. And then after years of competing, and let's say presently, right now, it's guys like Thor, and of course, Eddie Hall, and um, Brian Shaw, like the biggest guys in Strongman. Um, they're just like bigger, larger than life. And it's, um, it's, it's, it's constantly changing last season who I look up to, because my goals are constantly, not constantly changing, like I have, goals set in place that I've had from years ago that I'm still trying to achieve. But um, as I mature, you know, I see people differently and um, it's, 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 a, it's a tough question. But right now, um, my biggest inspirations are the guys in Strongman, for sure. As a child, what was it? Who was your hero then? Was there one, was there one like film movie star or anyone that you oh, would like? Oh, 100%. Um, as a child, and he still is, it's definitely The Rock. I love The Rock. I love Dwayne Johnson. Um, <laughs> I loved his WWE personality. I still watch um, clips from his um, wrestling days today. I just feel like he had so much charisma. And um, yeah, he's, he's been my hero and he, he kind of still is. I've never got to meet him. Just the other day, he commented on um, an Instagram post. I did a side-by-side -side comparison. And uh, one of his famous quotes is like, it doesn't matter what you say or something like that. And <laughs> he, left that, he left a comment on my post and I felt like I won the lottery because um, I've never been able to meet him or speak to him, and I couldn't believe that he saw my post, me of all people. So that was really cool. But yeah, he's probably, of all the celebrities that I can think of, he's um, the one I want to meet and shake his hand the most. Yeah. Why do you yeah. think um, heroes are important for young people? Or for anyone, really? Well, when I was a teenager, I was felt lost. I didn't know who to look up to. I didn't know what was... I had a decent idea what was right and wrong, but I needed direction. And someone like The Rock seemed to have it all together. You know, he was very charismatic. He had, he was married with kids. He was healthy. He was financially successful and stable. He was famous. And I just figured, well, why wouldn't I want to be like that? So I would just look at the moves he was making and, you know, um, his on-camera personality and, you know, just learn as much as I could about him to try and model myself after him. And it just felt like I had a sense of direction because as a teenager, if I didn't look up to anyone like that, like let's say I was looking up to um, people up to no good, you know, like your pocket, your environment, right? And the people around me when I was a teenager, I was living in some pretty rough neighborhoods. I don't want to be anything like them. I don't want to follow the things that they were doing. I want to go in their direction because like they're going down a dark and negative path. So I think it was just important that I just kept my eyes on someone like The Rock. Yeah, and I still do. I still do.
do the 120s and then we'll get stuck in, eh? So, I actually live in every borough, but I was born in Brooklyn. Brooklyn? And most recently, is that one of the roughest? <laughs> yeah, Brooklyn and the Bronx. Yeah? The Bronx will be rougher right now. The Bronx, right. Brooklyn has been regentrified, so. All right. So, did you go normal school, high school? Uh, I never went to high school. You never went to high school, why not? During the time I was supposed to be in high school, uh -huh. I was living in St. Martin, which is a French and Dutch island. And I lived there for three years. And while I was there, there was no English school on the island. Guys. So it was just one, and it was private and couldn't afford it. Uh -huh. So I spent two, three years riding my bike every day and just wasting, wasting time. Right, okay. <laughs> and when I got back to the States, I got my GD. Mm -hmm. And then you started working security, became a personal trainer. Yeah. And then eventually. So when did you start lifting weights? Uh, when I was in St. Martin, I had nothing to do. Right. So that's when I got hooked on just so working what, out. Age 13, 14? Yeah, right in between, I... like 13 and a half. Yeah. And I would just do body weight stuff, push-ups, pull-ups, and then eventually a broomstick and cinder box. Yeah. Anything so, I can use to lift weights. Very similar to me. Very similar. <laughs> so when I was 13, I uh, had a bit, I, I was a swimmer. Believe it or not, I was like a, a, an Olympic standard swimmer, part of the, the, the Olympic youth squad, I suppose you could call it that. Okay. And uh, a number of things happened to me when I was 13. I was chucked off the swimming squad, expelled from high school, uh, my nan got diagnosed with cancer, and I got a girl pregnant <laughs> right. all at the same time. So my life came crashing down. I, uh, I spent probably two years locked in the house I uh, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't leave my bedroom, wouldn't leave the house, on antidepressants, seeing psychiatrists, like a really dark time in my life. And it got to about 14 and a half, 15, and I thought, I've got to do something with myself. And the first thing I thought of was going to the gym and becoming like Arnold Schwarzenegger. So that was, and that's what channeled, I channeled all my darkness and depression into that. And I found that very quickly, all that depression and darkness just, you know, it, it, it helped. And I, I set the goal to be Mr. Olympia. Believe it or not, I wanted to be Mr. Olympia. Got to about 19 and I realized that I wasn't gonna compete with the five foot five guys, you know, on stage. So well, I had a talent and that talent was lifting weights. And I could lift weight, even at 19 years old, looking on Facebook and YouTube and whatever, I realized that I was one of the strongest men in the country at 19. So that's when I started doing Strongman. I you know, won England's strongest man at 22, UK's at 23, and World's at 24. But I remember my very first strongman contest, and this is how big headed and arrogant I was. My very first strongman contest at 19 years of age, I said to everybody, my mum, my dad, my friends, put it on Facebook, I'm going to be the world's strongest man at 19 years old. And That's 10 years right. later, pretty much to the day, I did it. So, I mean, you say, your aspirations are to be the top three in worlds, and I bet there's a lot of people out there that are like, shut the fuck up, you fucking idiot. My advice to you is don't fucking listen to them. Set that goal, set it as high as you possibly can, so set, go for that number one spot, and use all those people that say you can't do that as energy, as fuel, and make sure you prove those fucking wankers wrong. Because believe me, I've had it all. I, I said I was going to pull 500 kilo. I was laughed at. I said I was going to be the world's strongest man. I was laughed at. It, I could go on. Everything I've said, I've backed it up. And honestly, it was the people that said it couldn't be done that put the put the put the coal in the fire, as, as to say, and made me do it. Okay. Have you ever had any experiences with mental health, depression? Have you ever had anything? Because I think that kids that have been pushed back or restricted or been through a bad time tend to be the ones that, that flourish in the older years. So have you had any, any bad experiences? Of course, when I, when I was 13, 14, living in that part of the world in the Caribbean, I was bullied and I was taken advantage of and I was very insecure, very low self-esteem. I, it went from like thinking I was ugly and weak and skinny and just had all the kind of body image issues and I, was, I couldn't talk to girls. I didn't have a girlfriend. I never did at that point. Um, I couldn't um, hold a conversation, you know, because I felt like the kids were in school and I felt like I was stupid. And they, and I, they told me I was stupid. I believed them. Uh -huh. So that um, low self-esteem 
And that image of myself stayed with me up until I was about 21 years old. You know, I had, up until I was 21, until I broke that record, I had no confidence in myself and what I can do. I just kind of like rolled with the punches. Um, and I, it is a, um, a sweet feeling when you can prove that people say you can't do anything wrong. But for me, it was just being like the best version of myself and the feeling of when I finally gained confidence in myself and felt good about myself, um, that was just the best thing in the world because I spent a really long time, years growing up, like basically my whole teenage life, um, just having this so, super low self-esteem. And you do have a point, like it's because of that, that I think I am where I am at today. Where you are, yeah. Yeah. That's why I find, I mean, you speak to people like The Rock and he's got an amazing backstory. I, I always find that it's the kids that are pushed back in younger years that, that come back with a vengeance. And it is, for me especially, it was always, I've got to prove them fuckers wrong. I've got to prove myself worth. You know, that headmaster that sat there with that big grin on his face and said, you know, you're expelled from school, you're never going to be anything. And I remember thinking to myself there and there, I'm going to fucking show you. All right. All right. Yes. So Larry, you've been through this struggle. You have been through this, this bad time in your life and you, you've grown up and you've made a massive, massive sort of statement with what you've done. And I'm sure you can look back and laugh at all those people that made you feel that way. What's your advice to everybody right there listening right now on YouTube or whatever? What's your advice to them right now and where you stand now? What did that experience do to you? And how do you feel now about that? My advice to those watching would definitely be to focus on yourself and not to focus on what others you know, of you is. And there'll be a time where you can focus on yourself so much that you become obsessed with yourself. And it's okay, to, and it's okay at that point in life to be selfish and to only be concerned with just getting better. And when that happens, you know, you focus on yourself for so long, you look back at how far you've come since you started doing that. And then you're no longer the person that was getting pushed back and that was getting kicked on, you know, kicked while you're down. And then you, without even trying, you prove those people wrong. You don't even have to try anymore. You're just doing it by doing you. Yeah. And I'm where I'm at today because I do me the best. I, I focused on me and I got really good at doing me and not trying to be um, anybody else. And I think that's what teenagers have a problem with. They're trying to be like somebody else. They want to be somebody else. They want to be in someone else's shoes. Yeah. But you know, the shoes you have on now fit great and they're pretty awesome, you know? Yeah. So you just get comfortable in them. <laughs> yeah. And without even trying to be proving those people wrong, just focus on being the best version of yourself. That's good advice. You know? Really good. It's your set. All right. Get <laughs> some chalk on. It's not light anymore. <laughs> Come on, buddy, just do it to failure now. Get some blood in the muscles. Let's do it. Right, that'll do, we're all warmed up for log press. Got these a couple days ago. I've been using barefoot uh -huh. up until today. So I hear heel chill and lock and add five, 10 kilos on your press. So um, maybe I'm sure it's a lot less than that, but. I think I always log press. So to begin with, I've always log pressed and shitty trainers, but then I found that um, like a flat converse because the majority of my press towards the end actually came out of my calves. And if, you cut, if your foot's all already elevated, then you take the calf out of the equation almost. You're more stable, I agree with that. And you're probably in a slight, a better position. But in order, in order in able to get the power out of your calves, I think the flatter the shoe, the more, the more bounce you get out of your calves. Uh, but that's, that's my preference. Toward, and that was only towards the very end of my career I found that out. Right. Just bear that in mind, just see how, if you find that the power off the chest isn't very good, 
then I would suggest going in a flat. If you think it's good, then stay the way you are. I think one of the best ones I ever did, and this will be a good run for your YouTube ch channel, Larry, was the night before Will's Strongest Man 2017. Um, my biggest threat was Brian, in all honesty. And I went for a meal with Brian the night before, and it was a very eerie meal, because it was the night before the final, and obviously a lot of tension there, but we still went out to eat together. And uh, it was just very strange. Like, we didn't mention the contest as, at all. Like, we avoided the conversation completely. And then we got back to the hotel. And it was just me and Brian and my physio in the lift. And just as I was getting out the lift, I just turned to Brian. I was like, good, good luck tomorrow, buddy. Wish you all the best. And it, it, it just like, oh, thanks, Ed. I'll see you tomorrow, mate. And I just went, good luck. And just slapped him in the back of the dick. Oh, my God. <laughs> And he went like that, and just as he did it, the doors closed. And I was like, I just turned to my physio, I was like, fucking got him. <laughs> oh, no. It was the best thing ever. Brian, I'll tell you that. It was, uh, <laughs> but I knew I got in his head, big time. <laughs> Music to my ears. <laughs> I say that's a really shit log. <laughs> that's fucking awful. <laughs> It's made out of tin. What's the shit part about it exactly? It's fucking like the shape of it shit. <laughs> That's too smooth. It's bent as fuck. I honestly couldn't think of a worse log to train on. <laughs> there you go. We have, to, we have to do what we've got with. That's true. Well, when I get to a good <laughs> log, I'll be appreciative of it. It is a bit narrow. The thing is, you'll have to get used to that because a, a lot of the logs don't allow like a bit of a. A lot of them are similar to that, basically. You okay. really struggle to get a good flare on it. Okay. Um, that'd be good for training. <laughs> you want to swap it back? I'm not bothered. What do you think? You think it's smart? Let's do, let's do this one if you're not happy. Okay, yeah. I'm not a beast yet, only the beast get a mouthpiece. <laughs> Come on! Come on!
Feels great, but the drive off the floor, yeah, a lot harder. Like meeting from here, actually. All ah, right, yeah. Well, I suppose you're more lent, lent over, aren't you? Yeah. Right, but when you get it in that position, it actually puts your hips a bit more forward. Yes. Which puts puts the central gravity a bit better. Everything looked. Was, uh, the lifting weights and strongman. It's always always good to remember A to B. It's not A B C. So it's like a deadlift. If you're doing it in a straight line. A to B, if you've got it too far in front of you, you're then going A, B, C. So you're doing like a curvature. And the same with the log press. You want it going from here to here. You don't want to go out there and then coming up. So it's always about getting that efficiency. And that was spot on, it just went A, B. And that, that's what you've always got to think for strongman. A to fucking B as efficiently as you can. All right. Come on! This one look easier. Come on. Front of you, which made you sort of step, get under it. That's the best. 
So, got to really concentrate on that shelf. I know you haven't got one, but um, can you stick it out like you know, like you can stick your stomach out like you're pregnant? You can try. Like that, yeah. <laughs> That's what you've got to do. You've got to pull it in, to create that shelf, and use it as a proper bounce and just get under it. The second one was a lot better, but the first one you're a bit, bit too relaxed on on that. So keep it as tight as you fucking can. Much tighter. Spot on. Yeah, much tighter. And obviously when you go to like 210, 220, 230, if you haven't got that back strength to keep it in place, when you go to clean, you'll get it up, but it'll land in a really horrible position, and then you'll be pressing out in front of you, and that's when you start ripping your longer on your bicep and your labrum. So the, 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 get the clean right, and the press becomes easier. Okay. Yeah. slow. Get your hips through it. I'll fucking hit your chest a bit quicker. Keep breathing. Come on, deep breaths, buddy. Come on. Right, hips through quick. Come on. Yes, good. I just did a 180 kilogram log for two sets of two. I just got a heel chew for the first time doing a log press. I've never worn these before, so just getting adjusted to find my balance with them and a different log that I've been training with at Thor's gym, but 180 kilograms was my PR for one, what do you call it, a few weeks ago, so I'm already doing two sets of two with it. Um, quite difficult for today, but uh, everything's going as planned, I'm doing what's on the program. For now, it's some moderately heavy incline bench right after, and some accessory work. What's it like training with Ed? <sighs> Nothing quite like it. Um, I can't believe I've had the opportunity to train with Thor, and then soon after, Eddie, and I was actually in Europe a couple months ago trying to make a club with Eddie happen. He just had surgery done. So I'm super glad he was available this weekend. I wasn't, it wasn't really planned. So I'm glad things worked out where we can meet and make this happen. But I've learned a lot from him already. It's only been about an hour. And I'm sure <laughs> there's still more to learn while before he goes back to Europe. Yeah. Do you think you've got anything to impart on him? Do you think that there's anything you can teach him? This stage? Only thing I can teach him is uh, maybe how to get more ripped. <laughs> That's about it right now. <laughs> and maybe how to get his cast bigger. Thanks, <laughs> man. Well, today I've come to meet my buddy Larry from, uh, where'd you live now, Larry? LA? That's right. Originally New York, now he's LA based. Uh, he's due to meet up. Uh, a few months back, we ended up having a, a, a quite a big hernia operation because I ripped my stomach open. Um, so, uh, just coming here, a hangout more than anything. You know, he's training log press. He's, Larry's trying to get into strongman. He's trying to try to break into the scene. He's like, he's seen a little, well, quite a bit of hostility from the other strongmen. So, uh, and I, I had exactly the same thing when I was Larry's age. You know, trying to break into the strongman, and I was pushed back by overstrongman, not allowed to enter shows, uh, not invited to shows. And it's nice to see that Larry's been accepted 
by the big organizations and I just want to be here just to help Larry, just to give him a few tips, give him a bit of advice and uh, adjust his log, bit, log, log press a little bit if we can help that. But um, just generally just come and meet Larry because I know he's going to be one of the greats. He's going to, I, 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 I genuinely believe Larry will win Will's Strongest Man one day. I think he's got that mindset, he's got that personality and the ability to push the boundaries more than any other person. And I think that's a very niche ability to have. How's his log press? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, Larry's log press is pretty good. Um, his overhead power, you know, from what I've seen from YouTube and stuff, is phenomenal. You know, press, press over 200 kilo over his head quite easily. But when you've got to transfer that into a log press or an axle format, you've got to relearn the lift, basically. Done the right thing there, you know, he's built the, the, the basic power. You've got the power there. And that was always my advice to anybody getting into Strongman. You've got to have the three foundations to be able to good, be good at Strongman. And those are squat, bench, and deadlift. And Larry's certainly got those. And now it's just about learning the techniques and how to use those muscles in different ways. Cool. What's going to happen after this? Just to, just to quick. We're going to go for breakfast after this, I think. Once we've done training, we're going to hit, hit, hit a breakfast bar, a diner, whatever, we'll go have a good chat and uh, plan out plan out Larry's, Larry's career and what he's going to be doing in the future because I've got some plans for him and uh, he's got some aspirations so we'll see if we can work something out together. Must be just very quickly, it must be kind of weird to sort of be a grandfather of the sport now at the tender young age of like what, 31, 32? Uh, 31. Uh, must be kind of odd, I guess because you've retired, it puts you automatically in Godfather territory. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I have retired from Strongman uh, completely now. You know, I won the World's Strongest Man and I, I sort of, I wouldn't say lost interest, but I, uh, my goals changed. And Strongman um, wasn't part of that goal anymore. And I suppose being retired at, I mean, I retired at 29. I'm 31 now. And I suppose I am seen as uh, the uh, grandfather of the sport, you know, so, sort of like the Buddha, the, per the go-to person for advices. You know, I've been there and done that and I've, I've done the world records and I've won the world's strongest man. So th there's a hell of a lot I can teach the younger generation. And I'm very happy to be here with Larry and passing that, all that down. Skinny bar, huh? Yeah, I don't like skinny bars for... We could swap it. Overhead. Yeah. It's a better bar in here. Yeah, I think we'd be better too. Yeah. Fuck it. Really awkward. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Come on. Too low. Uh, good. A little less, so it's more on the Velcro. Just a little. Get on this. Let's you want it to tie? you mean? Ah, uh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Come on, let's go. Ah, uh, uh, come on, come on. Go, Larry. Bang it out. All you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, come on! Come on! Yes! Come on, 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 come on! Yep! Yeah. Oh, yes. man. Awesome, buddy. Look at that, man. Yes, sir. Good man. Is that 14 or 15? I lost count. 14, that was good. Uh, Come on! <laughs> What's the other thing you say? Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it, right? Yeah. Right, my two catchphrases. <laughs> is, that your, is that your actual catchphrase? That was the one I use the most when I have to know people up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think this career is going to take you? What do you want to kind of achieve? At? Arnold was a number of things, and then the governor of California. So, where could you see this all? Come An action movie star would be nice. <laughs> when I'm in my mid 30s and I beat my body to shit, can't rely on breaking PRs to earn a living. So, hopefully, Hyatt has a place for me. Fast and Furious 27. <laughs> Right. <laughs> when the rock retires. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking your ass or Both. <laughs> he he likes my it. breakfast. He likes it. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
try and isolate their lats or rhomboids with a bow? Uh, rhomboids and lats, yeah. yeah. <sighs> Hopefully that'll get me tighter when I'm cleaning the log. Yeah. I can them better. Strong back and strong chest. That's right. guys so i can't believe this happened this weekend i got to collab with eddie hall and get some training tips about the log and his future endeavors for this year um so far i hear you have a lot of success so you have um a show on history channel coming you have a netflix document the second one so yeah. can you tell us a little bit about what you have going on for this year yeah well after i won the world's strongest man i uh, had a bit of a down point and didn't quite know what to do with my wife and then decided to get into acting started doing acting lessons been doing acting lessons for a year and a half now uh, I've landed two t two big TV shows, one in the USA and one in the UK. I've got my very own TV show in the UK. Doing the big documentary, I've got a movie to be filming. Uh, no end of, of meetings and, 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 and meet, you know producers, heads of channels, and there's more TV shows and movies to be added. So it's a career choice that was risky. And after having such a successful career in Strongman, I felt as though it was just time just to pack that away and, and move on to something with more longevity you know, end of the day, you can't be the world's strongest man for the rest of your life. So I'm moving into stuff that's got more longevity and I'm, I'm having a blast. It's hard. In fact, I think it's actually harder than the strong man, in all honesty, but I'm having a blast. And I think it's got, I've got a long-term plan to, to retire at 40 and, I, and I'm sticking to it as of now. Okay, I'm super happy to hear that, man. Super happy to hear that. And I myself, uh, this year, plan on taking acting lessons. Any advice for getting into acting or anything I should know? Just, um, just be yourself. I think that's the, be the best advice I can give you for acting is to listen because it's so easy. You know, you get given lines and you go to the acting lessons and you, a lot of people just read off paper. And then when the paper's down, they still read. You know, you could be doing a scene with me and you now. And even though you're talking to me, all I'm thinking about is that next line. But if I actually listen to you and engage in that conversation and actually react to what you said, that, be that makes you an actor. And that's the best advice I can give everyone first of all. And I haven't done any movies or anything yet, so you yet to see my acting skills. <laughs> but everything I've done in the, you know, I've landed parts. I've been given parts in the, the big movies that have been dropped. I've been given parts in big series that have been dropped. It's a whirlwind. And I think the other best advice I can give is be consistent. You know, you've got to keep going. Even if it's a small movie, you've got to fly out to LA to meet the producer. You've got to fly to London to, to, to meet, you know, to get a small part on a TV show but all these little things add up and all good exposure leads to big exposure. So don't be lazy is another big, big bit of advice is go for every role you can until you keep landing the big stuff. Absolutely. And lastly, and I won't hold you up too long, but what could you say for myself and anyone else interested in getting to Strongman this year? Because I think Strongman has a lot of life being shown right now and people are probably on the fence about whether or not getting into it. They're probably concerned about getting hurt and you know, not having the proper training equipment. So what could you say? Well, like yourself, Larry, you know, I think the best advice I can give anybody out there is to build the foundations up and you've done that amazingly. You know, and by foundations, I mean squat, bench and deadlift. You get super, super strong and that gives you an amazing platform to move into strongman. And, you know, it's good. You know, powerlifting is great, bodybuilding is great. But in my opinion, strongman is the best sport on the planet. End of the day, every man on this planet would want to be the world's strongest man. If you say you don't, then you're lying to yourself. It's the most, it's the most alpha male title out there. It is, it's the best one you can hold. And it's an enjoyable sport. The camaraderie's there, everybody gets on. It's fun. There's thousands of events to sort of get stuck into, get all, all the variations. So my advice to anybody out there wanting to get in is just get stuck in build the foundations and get stuck in. Go and buy a log, buy a yoke, buy some farmers. Go and try yourself, enter an amateur show. Just don't be shy, just get stuck in there. All right, and what I like what you said earlier in the training session is, you know, you even went as far as um, 
bringing your deadlift platform with you to the world record deadlift and you're recommended I buy the exact same log that's going to pull out championships. And that never even crossed my mind to have that kind of, um, to, to do anything like that. You know, yeah, I just yeah. use the equipment that's available to me, but I never thought about just buying the equipment that's out of the competition. So. Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. I mean, you think about it. If you're training with a metal log for a year and then go into a competition with a wooden log, the weight, like a, for instance, a metal log, the weight is on the outside of the log, so it spins a bit differently. And a wooden log, the, the weight's more evenly distrib distributed, so it's a bit different to clean and press. Uh, even yokes, you know, different grips. Um, farmers will have different grips. And even as something as simple as a deadlift, you know, what bar are they using in the competition? Buy that bar. What's the platform going to be like? Is it going to be on rubber? Is it going to be on wood? Set that up. I went as far with the 500 kilo deadlift. One of my conditions was I took my platform with me from the gym. So I already had the bar. I was training with Alico plates and I actually lifted my platform up, put it in the van, drove it up there and set it up so that the 500 kilo deadlift was done on the platform that I trained with. And that's just little things like, you know, lines in, 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 the, in the board that I'd like to get, you know, so I know, in the, I know I'm in the middle, I know where the weight's sat so it's even, uh, I know where my body, like, you know, I put little markers where my feet would go. And that just takes that out of the equation on the day. End of the day, if you can make yourself more comfortable, then you've got more chance of hitting PRs and, and winning competitions. That's right. Train how you play. And Eddie, thank you so much for imparting your wisdom on us. Thank you. And please, Eddie has so much coming this year and the next and moving forward with acting and strongman and so much more. Please follow him at Instagram. Instagram, Eddie Hall, WSM. Uh, Facebook, Eddie Hall, The Beast. And YouTube as well. I've just started doing YouTube, Eddie Hall, The Beast, or Eddie The Beast Hall, one of them. Picture of me in the desert looking fucking awesome. <laughs> That's right. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.